four other children of the adoptive parents are in protective custody. If there's any kind of uh, a juvenile situation where there's been any kind of neglect or um, any kind of harm to any of the children. We're just trying to eliminate people. And you always start from the people close to them, closest to them, and um, the people who saw them last. So have we questioned them? Absolutely. Have we searched the house? Absolutely. The backyard? Absolutely. All the other rumors are just that rumors. And they're entitled to their privacy, and they're entitled to people staying off their private property. Well, we have cops actually posted in, in the front yeah, door right there. None of the neighbors have seen the kids. Ever? No. Have you guys, um, you talked to the police all last night? Yes. Police have not been scavenging through the desert yet. He said in this point in their investigation, that has not led them to going out there and, and trying to recover a body. He would not clarify where police have searched so far and says the department doesn't have the resources to send search teams into the desert. Honestly, the interactions that they would have with people, it was always really quick. Like when we would be coming, they would either run out that way or they would like if they were coming in, they would just come in hella fast and just go into their apartments. They wouldn't really talk too much, you know. They're really quiet people. They're really quiet people. They didn't socialize with nobody. Um. Like all of you, the disappearance of Orin and Orson West has deeply saddened me. Please understand that no resource is being spared in the best interest of the boys and to protect the integrity of the investigation, law enforcement is not able to share every detail with the public. The case has not gone cold. We can't come out and talk mm -hmm. about those developments. Uh, right now, you know, there's information that if it's released could compromise the integrity of the investigation. There's three possible things that occurred. One, that there was foul play. Two, that there's a stranger abduction or an abduction of some sort. Or three, that the boys just wandered away. Can you say that anyone in California City of those neighbors saw those boys when they lived there? We're still vetting information that we're getting from people. We have information that we've obtained that will point you in basically a 360. When and where was the last time anyone besides them saw Orin and Orson? Uh, I believe the, the, the grandmothers had seen them prior to. I don't know the exact dates, but the people that we have spoke to have seen them, other than the parents. The grandmothers. So that was the relative they visited before, it was like recently before they went missing, correct? Yes. Oh, where are the rest of the kids? The rest of the kids were grandma. Grandma.
foul play. Could compromise the integrity of the investigation. And to protect the integrity of the investigation, law enforcement is not able to share every detail with the public. Investigators say Miracle and Tony Crook were caught on surveillance footage holding hands walking down Mingle Creek embankment near their apartment, going into the creek but not seen coming back up. Two children found safe in the woods more than two days after vanishing are now back home. The story just didn't make sense. The whole thing doesn't jive. It just doesn't. Well, Clyde, it all happened in this yard here behind me. That's when a four-year-old boy and his brother were in this yard playing when a man approached this fence and tried to lift that four-year-old over the fence. They have so much energy. Brothers Riker and Gage have to get outside and run around at least once a day. This afternoon, just after four o'clock, the boys were playing in their backyard when a stranger approached the fence. I was inside cooking dinner and my kids were playing outside and I just had a really bad feeling to go look outside and I leaned over our, our uh, back deck and looked outside and a guy was leaning over our fence trying to take my four-year-old son. Ariel Blakesley grabbed Gage and asked the man what he was doing. And the guy just said I was lifting him over the front fence or over our backyard and, um, and then he goes and I noticed that you had two little boys and then he just took off running. Uh, what we had today was a preliminary hearing in Roman County General Sessions Court in front of Judge Terry Stevens with both the, the defendants that were arrested yesterday, uh, Michael Anthony Gray Sr. and his wife Shirley Gray, uh, the charges that were outlined yesterday, the uh, specially aggravated kidnapping charges relative to two of, children, two of the children, uh, the aggravated child abuse to the same two children, aggravated child neglect to those two and a third child, and then the abuse of a corpse to uh, a dead uh, daughter of this family uh, that was found, that was discovered in the backyard in a barn actually in the early hours of Saturday morning. And so obviously uh, that begs the question about additional charges relative to how that child died and who's responsible and how for that child's death. Uh, as I stated in the press conference yesterday, we're waiting on some further analysis and testing of the skeletal remains of what we believe to be a daughter, a uh, minor child daughter of the family. Uh, the information was gathered in an initial investigation.
A dog cage taking center stage in the courtroom Wednesday on day three of the case against Geraldine Graham. The prosecution alleging that little Rilia Wilson, who went missing over a decade ago, had sometimes been placed inside that cage. Deborah Coakley Winfield, a friend of the defendant, says she gave the cage to the Grams. I remember the cage and I remember that it was said to use to keep her from hurting herself. Another witness testifying Wednesday that at a fall 2000 dinner outing with the Grams, she noticed marks on the little girl. She was a little, she was scarred up um, on her arms and her head. Are we talking about a couple scratches here or there? There were, there were scrapes on her arms. Um, there was a gash above her, on her head, for her head. Laquise Tuff, who says she and her mother, a friend of the defendant's life partner, Pamela, visited the Graham home more than a dozen times, says Rilia received less affection than younger sister, Roderica. And as Christmas 2000 approached, she noticed Rilia wasn't at the home. What did the defendant tell you? That she was on uh, these series of trips to um, Disney World in New York. Two-year-old Layla Daniel and her three-year-old sister were placed in foster care at the Rosenbaum's house in 2015. Nearly four years later, Jennifer and Joseph Rosenbaum are on trial. The couple is accused of abusing and murdering Layla in November of 2015. Today, we heard testimony from neighbors. A registered nurse also said she suspected Layla was being abused while in the couple's care, especially after Jennifer brought over Layla after she claims the two-year-old fell down the stairs and she noticed the child had a black eye.
got our youngest two go outside and play with chalk on the, the back patio. I don't have not one evil bone in my body. 23BC did speak Whatever to the biological do, father of the two missing I'll toddlers who Thank declined you. interviews and wished to keep their names private. All the other rumors are just that rumors. We love and care about and are trying to find. Where are the boys? Me and my wife. I just know that they were really good parents as far as I was concerned. in the best interest of the boys. There's three possible things that occurred. One, that there was foul play. Two, that there's a stranger abduction or an abduction of some sort. Or three, that the boys just wandered away. Do you think someone took them? Do you think they're lost? Do you think- Yeah, definitely. I definitely know they're not walking around. They're not that kind. Bring our boys home. They are, they are our children. And so we want them back. You have two sweet little boys that nobody uh, knows where they are. And, and I would like to be able to tell you, but I can't. It's all I want is to find a baby. We want to know the history of the boys. We want to know the people involved in their lives. Uh, if you saw some something suspicious in any of the communities as far as uh, people in, involving juveniles, uh, let us know. Our children. And uh, you know as well as I do that it's not just the public that are watching this. It's if there are people involved in this, then they're also paying attention to it as well. Said, well, we knew. 